morning morning monsters how is everyone doing i know i've been quiet i know i've not been on stream for a few days but hey i started a new job at adobe not something i'm going to talk about much but i joined the medium team but what i'm really excited about is vr chat did a big announce i was gonna hop into vr chat and do the stream in vr chat but then I was like, mm, let's keep it here. It, let's uh, let's chill and talk about it. Because I think what I'm going to talk about, which is managing community expectations, that whole rile and some of the technical bits maybe, I think is a lot different to what a lot of the other um, VR chat people are going to be talking about and the community generally. First off, it's super nice to see an update from them all. You know, it's, it's really lovely to see them talk about everything but i also know how wonderfully cathartic it is whenever you do those streams and how how wonderful it is to get that information out there so how difficult it is to get that information out there and the the consequences of getting that information out there you know it's, it's it's really tough so obviously the the clear point of reference is is dreams you know dreams went through a very difficult development cycle and i don't want to dive too much into that but i think Everyone is familiar with the infamous like early announcements of Dreams Beater in 2016 and all that jazz, you know, best intentions. But then there was a whole bunch of stuff that was happening with that. And the community got really frustrated and, uh, you know, the molecule got very frustrated and there was this whole, ah, and it's a cycle I've actually seen happen to multiple devs. Dreams was the first time I was inside of it. I've had friends, you know, tell me through all that stuff. I've also experienced small versions of this, but never on the scale that Dreams had it. Thankfully, Dreams now has Abby. She's an amazing, I don't want to call her a community manager. She's got a better title than that because she does so much more than community management, but she is like, yeah, Abby is, I think she was officially promoted to manage the live product. I can't remember the, the title and everything because I know that was announced the other day on a stream but yeah Abby is um, really really good at, at managing that complex beast and uh, yeah so I, I think all the awesome all the excitement for the VR chat announced but I also wanted to come and give them a big hug and bat the community on the nose because they they are front with that stream you know I was just watching it in the bar that stream up front you know Ron goes up and Tupper goes up and they're like please be aware this stuff's coming it's subject to change da 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 because it's terrifying you know generally speaking if you go to any of these postmortems if you go to if you talk to anyone who's who's dealt with a no man's sky style issue i think i think it was no man's sky who who said communicate through your change log you know it's it's so much better to tell people by saying well here's the thing you can't always do that though and it does come with negatives like you know vr chat was clearly looking for some feedback on some stuff you know they they've got this huge community of creators and this huge community of players and you know you want to maybe float some test balloons up and get some concepts talked about and that's super tough that that is really really tough because you know if you're if you're talking about if you're talking about the start of a development feature of like we've identified a need here in this mysterious glowing white light and we need to pull this need out and we need to start talking about this need we need to start discussing it you know designers are going to have opinions programmers are going to have opinions the whole team's going to have opinions ideas and how to solve it and there's going to be a creative thing because you know it's a creative project you know there's this creative work and there's going to be this legacy of, of discussion and some of the topics discussed there will never be made public things like brand issues things like legal issues partner stuff you know there there's other factors or even like future features they're not willing to talk about yet but they want to talk about this so this is a complicated phase so that is way at the start and then there's prototyping and development and iteration all this stuff till you get something that's functional and then taking something from functional to production is a whole nother layer of launching and, and depending on your product and where you are in your life cycle function to production if you're an indie title if you're um, not released yet you know that's quite small but if you're a service-based title you have a committed audience you're all out there that feature to production work can sometimes be as much as 10x 
of the actual future development work. You know, it's depending on what the work is, it can be really, really huge. So like when you see something like VRChat's avatar dynamics, they look finished, right? But I'm so glad they called out the permissions issue. VRChat's really good at safety and management of that stuff. And you know, like full disclosure, VRChat was one of the companies I interviewed at through this whole process. They were actually very lovely because I was already sitting on several contracts because I started negotiation with companies like early December and some other companies in Feb and January. Well, no, January. I think, yeah, VRChat was the only company I started talking to in late Feb. They were like the last company I started talking to simply because I didn't know that there was space there. And they, they were lovely. They did a whole rushed series of interviews. We didn't advance to contract office day, partly I think because I was rushing them so much. But I'm glad actually because I'll do another video sometime talking about why it's nicer sometimes to be in the community of a thing you love than developing on it. But you know, I'm, I'm super passionate about metaverses and stuff and I think VRChat is one of the best representations of it out there. But yeah, I'm also I'm also really happy we're getting some diversity with Neos and other projects. And, and NVIDIA Omniverse, I will do a whole other video talking about GTC sometime. But needless to say, bringing it back to VRChat, they have been doing um, some really solid work and it's, it's really hard to talk about this stuff especially when you have just gone through probably your hardest holiday season. Like one of the most successful holiday seasons and like the whole quest, the quest launch for them was just such a big deal, you know, it was a huge multiplier in concurrency, but it also meant they had to focus a lot of effort on um, their mobile development and just a whole new range of bug fixing, the fact that their content was split between PC and mobile, and uh, yeah, the scale of their users just shooting up. And I think, you know, culminating as everyone remembers in the New Year's explosion. And it doesn't feel nice when you're a top or a community management person and you're having to go on and like, server issues, we're looking into them, server issues, we're looking into them. And I mean, their technical posts are really great and fantastic, but you know, their technical posts, it's one of those things of someone like me can understand them and can sympathize, but I think a lot of the players, can, players can be a bit cruel sometimes, you know. I suppose that's my reason I wanted to hop on this. I wanted to share some of my excitement, but I also wanted to just, like, give people some perspective of how difficult it is for devs to do this kind of opening up and how difficult it is for devs to, to talk about these features as much as they want to. You know, if you're if you're a small team, a really small team with a small community, people know the team by name. They can forgive you when you change your mind on a feature. They can sympathize when, you know, your office gets flooded or, you know, one of your main devs goes off to have a kid or, you know, life stuff happens because they see you as people. But as your community grows and as your team grows, you you lose that and you transition you know rightly so because you have more responsibility now into a company phase and people are a lot crueler again justifiably to companies but yeah it's it's one of those things that makes it really really difficult because you're you're so used to this fast iteration phase and then you have to start bug fixing and you have to start servicing the community and it's a really tough thing to balance and uh, you know you may be working on these awesome awesome what do they call them VR labs projects or you know Friday jams or 20 percent time or whatever but every time you launch a feature you kill or you delay a feature you lose a little bit of community trust and it's so hard to build that community trust up but you know, you as a dev, you just want to share this stuff. And you know, it, it's, it's tough, it's tough. You know, like I think the classic one is Peter Molyneux, you know, like having met Peter a few times and spoken to him, I really sympathize because he's clearly just a really creative guy. He clearly gets very excited about his stuff. It's not to say that he's faultless and blameless, we're all human, but you know, he got like kind of the worst of the lens focused on him in the worst possible way and you know we saw it again with no man's sky with sean and his team it's 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 tough you know it's really really tough yeah it's funny and the big the harder thing as well is sometimes 
your just sorry seem insane talk about fable 3 fable 3 was really good right but the thing is is sometimes your early fans don't like as your band or your development or your game or whatever transitions to its new phase like you talk to not so much anymore because the final fantasy community is aged up but when final fantasy 10 came out it was the most successful final fantasy far and away but for many years if you spoke to anyone They'd be like, oh, you yeah, know, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX. And everyone was like, Final Fantasy X. It's like, oh, that's the popular consumerist one and da da da. But by, by and far, Final Fantasy X was the most played, the most sold. Yeah, and, and now that it's aged on, I think a lot of people look back to X with a lot of happy memories. But getting back to VR chat and what they're up to, yeah, it's very, very tough. But, you know, they went through a difficult holiday season, the New Year's service blow up, they had all of their difficulty of scaling. I, at some point, will do... I did a talk about the Dream servers, which isn't under Sony NDA because reasons and stuff. I want to double check that talk before I give it again, but I'd like to put that talk online in some format because I think it'll also talk about some of the stuff that they're facing with VRChat. Yeah, that's super interesting. But... They're, you know, they've been fighting these server issues and uh, it's tough, you know, it's, it's really, really tough. And that was actually one of the things that was made me most hesitant to join VR chat. I was so worried about getting pulled because I wanted to go back into VR work and client work and write software and not servers, you know, and, you know, they desperately needed server people, not so much client people at the time. And I was just like, but yeah, it was really fun. OSC, um, super excited for them to be exploring OSC. Obviously Dreams has had to OSC support and it's had an OSC port in there for the longest time. And when Evans introduced me to OSC, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I went on this huge technical dive last year into it. The OSC development community is insanely cool. There is some really, really cool tech out there for reasons I haven't spoken about it. But I'd quite like to maybe do, I'd quite like to maybe do a dream hack thing where I do some MIDI to OSC hacking. OSC is Open Sound Controller. It's it's really just a UDP socket that you push data through in a specific way. It's like a it's like JSON almost. It's a it's a way of of discuss, dis, uh, like pushing data through. And obviously Dreams has this so you can plug a MIDI keyboard into Dreams and we made the code public, like Alex made the code public when it was first done, right? But sadly, no one's really played around with it. So maybe I need to play around with it. But for um, the longest time, VRChat had this, I'm trying to remember now, if I look at the VRChat SDK, it was, I think, just an on-off button for the world. But oh, there we go, VR, VRC OSC button in. So basically, you can turn a button on and off in VR chat in the world using OSC. And I've been meaning to ha hack something together with it because I wanted to show some stuff there with that. But I think I'll do Dreams first. I'll, I'll hack the MIDI to OSC stuff and then I'll, I'll do some VR chat stuff as well. And that'll be really fun. But yeah, that's, the, I, I want to, I think what I'll do is I'll do something in Python so it's a bit more approachable because the existing code that's out there is C++. That would be the thing I'd want to write it in. And you can just use the code that's on my GitHub and on Evans's GitHub because they're, uh, it's public open source code. Annie, thanks for the raid. We're in the middle of our morning monster show. We're talking about VR's chat, a recent announce where they've um, been talking about this stuff. And I really just wanted to give a perspective from a developer's point of view of being kind to developers who are running these big services, who have all these big commitments. Because, you know, like, I think Dreams, great example, right? So focusing on the VR chat stuff. So the OSC stuff, super exciting. But yeah, they're talking about to people about the project you're developing is very, very tough. Because, you know, you guys have seen like, so for example, Dreams, the, the sound audio importer, right? Again, NDA is here, I can't talk too much about stuff. But the audio importer was there at Beta. And I remember being the person during Beta, I was on server call and to my knowledge, it may have since changed, but to my knowledge, it was the only time we ever actually hot wrote code on call and deployed it. But it was like the week before New Year's or it was 
yeah, it was, it was the week before New Year's because it was that Christmas New Year's week. I had to deploy this thing because someone did something really naughty with the audio recorder and we were just like, well, several people did. And uh, we turned it off. It was really sad. And it was sitting there. And people for the longest time, you know, the community, and again, I'm not going to talk about internal stuff because thing, but from then until the audio home portal was recently released, you know, because we also had the 30 second limit come in at some point, the community in April constantly about the audio home portal, rightly so, because, you know, it was a cool feature, but also the 30 second limit and all that jazz and da da da. And uh, that's not to say that work wasn't happening on it. You know, I did the audio import I did most of the work to bring the audio importer back in December as I was sort of wrapping up and then literally I was writing audio importer code until I left in late Feb and I was like the last commit was like here it is here's all the stuff it needed a little bit of I think UI polish and stuff and all the but the thing is is that you know then you've still got things like all the videos to make, like all the videos Tom made and all the bits and bobs and you've got to schedule it for release and stuff. And literally until, because it came out like what, last week, literally until like late to mid Feb, we still didn't have a confirmed it's coming out on day X thing. Just because, you know, stuff happens. And the, yeah, the, the difficulty is that if you talk about any of this stuff and it gets delayed or it changes and the audio on board is a good one because there's so many policy and legal and just everything kind of issues that it's tough. That's why I was actually really surprised that VR chat talked about their monetization coming. I think that they're either very confident <laughs> they're very confident or yeah I, I i hope that goes smoothly for them because for those of you who don't know to take money and give money to other people you then qualify your company as a financial instrument and there's all kinds of regulations that come in and there's actually service providers and other companies that will do the service for you it's like when you give bits to twitch you'll see on your credit card bill or whatever oh, i can't remember the company's name but it's one of the big provider companies that twitch uses i don't know if they've switched that over to amazon yet but for the longest time they used exola that's it exola yeah they're one of the big payment providers that handles this financial instrument side for your business and that's that that's really tricky that's really really tricky thankfully vr chat for those of you who don't know is backed by venture capital their biggest investor is a venture capital firm called makers fund and makers fund is very much in the space and familiar with that so i'm sure that they're getting advice and things like that but the technical part of bringing that feature to life is I mean it's it's tricky because the moment real money is involved you have to have an audit trail you have to be able to like flag it up with custom support you have to be able to deal with fraud you have to have tooling for that stuff it's not just the actual send money from A to B it's the audit trail and then it's tying into your customer support back end which becomes a whole nother thing but that's actually the small part of it the really tough part of it is the legal side. The legal side is really, really tough. So, you know, pretty much everything they've spoke about, they're aiming to get out this year. Some of the stuff sooner, some of the stuff is like summer. But yeah, if they get the monetization stuff out, it'll be it'll be super awesome to see it come out. I do think, by the way, if you're a creator, if you want to support creators, have a PayPal button, have a Patreon, or use one of the sort of lower percentage things i actually did a video the last video on my youtube channel the last morning monsters we did and if you're watching on youtube i'll try to remember to put a little card up there so you can go and see that there we go there's a reason why patreon's got so big it's because their percentage cut is so small relatively speaking it's still large considering that if you take direct payments from someone, it's like 99% of the money you get. So Patreon does take a big chunk, relatively speaking, but it's smaller than if you give someone bits, if you give someone a Twitch sub, if you get someone uh, money in 
whatever the VR chat cut is, I don't know what it'll be. So there's more direct financial instruments. If you can, always help. It's like um, buying comics, We're, like we sell our books at conventions and comics at conventions. And whenever someone buys something from us at an actual convention, even a physical book that we printed, we, our margin, we make more money just because of how percentages and print costs and shipping costs and everything work. We make more money selling a book at a convention than we do a digital copy online, which is bonkers because there's a physical production of a thing produced, but you know, that's, that is how it works. So yeah, if you can ever, if you can ever directly support your creators, I think that's always a better way to go about it. Though it's very important that VR chat gets monetization in because the bulk of your supporters have this this friction barrier this, this convenience barrier to overcome and having a convenient way to just throw a few bucks at someone on twitch or on vr chat it just means more money will go to creators and that's why things like patreon are super important and enable the creator economy because the biggest issue for artists getting paid and creators getting paid isn't actually people wanting to pay artists and fees the biggest barrier is actually people just realizing there's an artist there that could use some money or be paid. And when you make it as easy as buying coffee, then more people pay artists. And that's, that's a wonderful world to be in. So let's start wrapping this up. Let's put a ribbon on this. At the end of the day, I'm super excited for the VR chat features. If I was to rank them, I think the, the OSC stuff's up here. I really love it. The, no, actually, Avatar Dynamics. Avatar Dynamics is up there. Avatar Dynamics is through the bloody roof, especially having played with them in Neos. They're just amazing. Yeah, Avatar Dynamics is through the bloody roof. But then I'd have OSC uh, about here. The, the world persistence and the player persistence stuff, it'll be super interesting to see how they deploy that because you know, having done it for having done it for dreams and having done map persistence and all that jazz, it's hard. It's really, really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's tough. But yeah, they've got a whole range of stuff that's coming through that's very exciting. But yeah, I'll, I'll be doing more of these streams and stuff. Oh, for those of you who don't know, I did start my new job this week. My new job is at Adobe. I'm working on the Medium team. Medium is a VR sculpting app those of you who don't know. So yeah, I'm not in the games industry anymore. First non-games job of 15 years. I obviously won't be talking too much about work uh, just because, but yeah, thank you for that. Yes, I'm, I'm very excited to join that team. They're a very, very cool team. And for uh, Dreamers, I'm actually working with Anton. Anton was one of the original people behind Dreams on that team. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like the, the core like technical crew, obviously Kareem and stuff on the outside was there, but the talk, core technical crew was Evans, Anton, Anton, and Simon. And yeah, woohoo, celebratory coffee. Because mm -hmm. I haven't finished my coffee yet. But yes, very excited to be at Adobe, very excited for the VR chat stuff. We will do a stream where we talk about OSC and we hack some OSC dream stuff. And then maybe we'll do some OSC VR chat stuff because that'll be exciting. We'll do a, a thing about GTC, NVIDIA's big tech conference that's happening at the moment. There's some really cool talks, especially around the Omniverse that I've been watching all week on that. And I've been wanting to talk about the Omniverse for a while. That's on the cards. And of course, my Skate Every Day in April Challenge is still continuing. And there's a new channel for that, which is the Skate Sonic channel. But yeah, take care, everyone. And uh, I will see you when I see you.